black women are the only women on the planet Earth with the mitochondrial DNA. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the government wants to isolate the mitochondrial DNA so they can use it for their own women to live like that. Now, break that down. Please, for us that don't understand. The EG. <laughs> only the black woman has it. No other woman on the planet Earth has it. This is why y'all kill me when y'all be running and talking about something. I'm not from Africa. I'm a pretendian. <laughs> I'm from the Cherokee. My mama Choctaw. I'm Seminole. He's a damn coon. That's what you mean. Choctaw women don't have mitochondrial DNA. Seminole women ain't got mitochondrial DNA. The only women with mitochondrial DNA are African women. So if you got mitochondrial DNA, I'm sorry, you are not a Cherokee. What is mitochondrial DNA? I'm asking to break it down for those who don't know what it is. Woman, if you don't stop interrupting my speech. I'm here to learn. I'm here to learn. It is the single most powerful set of genes that you can have and if you can isolate it, it is believed that you can recreate life without conception. So they need to isolate it because they believe if they can get it from a black woman and give it to a white woman, they can increase their birth weight. Because right now, 25 of 50 American states have a declining Caucasian population. They're passing on more than they're being born. You know? And I don't wish nothing on anyone, but that's the situation that they're dealing with. So a black woman have a problem making babies. Why would you believe the developed world in infant mortality? Because they are killing our babies doing childbirth. So black women, I strongly recommend you better have your baby at a birthing center. I don't recommend going to one of these hospitals in Williamsport. That baby gonna come out dead on delivery. It's happening all over America. Yeah. Did y'all hear about the track star? Yeah. She just died. Yeah. Three time Olympic gold yeah. medal. She yeah. died in her house yeah. having contractions for birth. They're killing us. And now abortion is illegal in a lot of states. If they want to reduce the black population, they got to kill the babies on the mm -hmm. And guess what's one of the biggest things they're doing? Giving y'all that epidural in your spine. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't even use the epidural. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons y'all need the epidural is your body is so dehydrated. You women are so dehydrated. Because all you want to do is drink honey and shit and get pregnant. Coffee. So you go to the hospital. No lubrication. So it's time to deliver that baby and it ain't enough lubrication. And you know we got big ass heads. And that head can't come out. And your walls is dry. Your big ass head's going dry. You got to be hydrated, like women. But see, in Africa, you don't have a baby laying on your back. No. In Africa, you have a baby squatting back. It makes sense. Yeah. The reason your baby ain't coming out, they're not working with gravity. They're supposed to be standing up with the baby pulling down. You're laying on your back. The baby can't come out like that. Because you want to be sophisticated. And then, y'all feeding the baby all kind of toxic chemicals. Because you got to weave in the perm while you're pregnant. And all that's going to your bloodstream. I hope y'all read the news. Weave and perm juice has been connected to fibroids, mm -hmm. cervical cancer, breast cancer, yep. brain cancer. Y'all literally kill yourself to look like Caucasian women. Not to look like Caucasian women. I'm not blaming the black woman, I'm blaming the black man. Because they will fire you for being uncapped and Why am I blaming the black man for blacking and wasting $30 billion a year on weaves and perms? Yeah. Because. Black men want our women to look European. Yes. We want them to look European. And the black woman has studied the black man and she can tell that we're attracted to women who have a European veneer. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Some black men can't stand a sister with that natural nappy That's right. I know this all got. Yeah. Every black man here, we can make our women go natural tomorrow. 
We could. Just tell him this relationship is over and he don't get rid of that. Do you want a man or do you want a weed? Which one do you want? <laughs> <laughs> and let me say this to my sister your natural beauty is so unique that you often deny yourself your true beauty mm. by covering your face up with all that extra hair you don't even need mm -hmm. sometimes you can't even see your damn face I'm, I'm saying this Ever really wants to not let cut her hair off the back Yeah. Gorgeous. Me yeah. alone, Long, gorgeous. Look at all the sisters when they cut it low. They got to be bubbled when they cut it low. Her features come out, and you really see how beautiful it's like on this. But you feel so insecure about your looks. That you're going to have this mop on your head. <laughs> when the whole real world community is coming in here. How do I know about the Raymarks? Because at the Scotland School for Veterans Children, I was in the barber group. They told me how to cut in, so I, I saw the sisters who were coming in with creepy crumbs. So they all got a Raymark right now. They need to eat, feed them. So some of y'all, this summer right now, ladies, while the sun is out, feeding your melon, if you got bald spots and ringworms, cut your hair off. Start fresh this summer. But y'all don't think of a black woman do? You try to babysit the ringworm patch. <laughs> and you keep on nursing it with all kinds of little made in China juices. <laughs> <laughs> Some kidney <key> oil. <laughs> <laughs> Some big moisturizer. And the ringworm is eating it all up. <laughs> Five years later, it's still got the ringworm. They had uh, <laughs> Well, your sister got bald spots and ringworms, make her go bald. And just wear a head wrap. Right? Oh my God, you know, you wear a head wrap. Right? So just some head wraps. Mm -hmm. And let your head grow back. And guess what, bro? This is what you got to do. When your woman uh, shave her head bald, you got to massage her head every night because the hair is like a tree. It's crumbling. You got to kiss her head. <laughs> you to come on, you need to come on back. Come on back. That forehead is a little pronounced. Come on back. <laughs> I'm telling you, I have sisters who tell me success stories. They say, Dr. Umar, I did exactly what you said. I cut my hair, my hair came back stronger than it ever was. My hair was always thin. I took care of it from mm -hmm. all. And now I got more hair than I ever had. Ladies, you got me. And that's why the Frederick Douglass office called the Academy. Also cutting out some trauma. None of our teachers can have big hair. Trauma. So if any of you ladies want to work at my school, tell us as well. Send your resume, but you cannot work at the school if you're not natural. Mm -hmm. We 100% natural. I'm serious. Mm -hmm. No beef, no burn, no European hair color, no browns, no brunettes, none of that shit. Must mm -hmm. be. Mm -hmm. I'm that serious. Mm -hmm. Kinky weed, it was a weed! I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> and you know why? Because when we start the girls' academy, the Anna Douglas and Amy Garvey had the Amy Wilkie who started the Girls Academy too. Okay. How do you want to stand before them and tell them that they are God's original woman and are beautiful as they are when you're not comfortable in your natural state? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So I cannot let you come before our girls when you're still harboring something mm -hmm. in personal insecurities. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. No means, no words. You got to be natural. And if you forget to cut your hair off, I'm going to cut it for you on the first day. You're going to be bald while we're going to get back to it. Okay? Now we got some of the black men in prison. The black men ain't got no damn skills no more. That's why. Hello. Up until 1970, every black man had a skill. We used to work to work with our hands. Yeah. And then after they killed Dr. King, the government came into the black community and shut down all the building trades. Yeah. Went into the high school, took out all the skill programs. Yes, wow. yeah. okay. they did. That's right. They started telling us to go to college. And ever since they've been telling us to go to college, we've been going to jail. Yeah. And in debt. Mm -hmm. You should only see a child in college if you can ask the three questions affirmative. Question number one Did you raise your child with discipline? Because it ain't no need to send your child to Penn State if you know they don't have no discipline. That's 
right? If he get high now, he gonna get high at Penn State. But he gonna get locked up when he do it at Penn State. Your daughter thirsty now, she gonna be thirsty at Mansfield. But she gonna get pregnant at Mansfield. They gonna do exactly what they doing in your house, in that dorm. Who you fool? And then you want to curse them out. I took out a loan on my mortgage for your college education. Now you're going to go and get dropped. You knew that. Because yeah. yes. that's who you raised. A lazy ninja! <laughs> what is Dr. Umar's definition of discipline? The ability to do what your child don't want to do when it has to be done, whether they like it or not. Uh-huh. Uh, can he put down the video game and clean his room up? Can he come in for playing basketball and study for the test? Can your daughter get off the damn telephone and come get that book report done? Does your child have the ability to delay gratification long enough to take care of the responsibility? What does matter? You can't see what you ain't got. And if they can't do that, if they can't do that, you have failed. See, you want to put the time in now? Why you live in your house? Or do you want to put the time in and they go to jail? And you got to keep putting a hundred dollars on the commissary every week, taking six hour bus rides to go see your child. So you could have invested in them now. But you chose to wait until they became adults because you have better things to do. Your career comes before your child. Your girlfriends come before your child. Your fraternity come before your child. Your football team you coach come before your child. Why do you think so many NFL coaches got children who committed suicide? Mm. Every other coach in the NFL got a child that took their own life. You know why? Because my daddy's career is more important than me. Mm -hmm. huh. Why do you think our girls get pregnant? Teenage pregnancy is not about sex. Teenage pregnancy is about abandonment. Your daughter is looking for a man to validate her. Mm -hmm. Daddy too busy with his bunny. Mm -hmm. So the girl went out and got every boy in the neighborhood to her. We can solve our problems, y'all. In Williamsport, you can really stop yours. Because y'all not that large. Y'all yep. don't have the distractions of Philadelphia and New York. Y'all don't have the distractions of Atlanta and Houston. Y'all yep. don't have the distractions of Oakland and Chicago. Y'all can organize. And a good queen, Sister Melody, asked the question, what do we do? I want to start a chapter here tonight of my National Independent Black Parent Association. Let me explain it to you, then I'm going to close. The NIBPA is a movement I started in Baltimore in 2015 to organize black parents to fight against educational racism. Mm -hmm. Six committees. You can choose the one you want to be on. Do you want to be on the special ed committee? They investigate special ed fraud, special ed abuse. They expose black kids who should not be in special ed. They expose poor spending of special ed money. Or do you want to be on a discipline committee? They investigate. How many black kids were suspended from Williamsport Public Schools last year? How many total days of suspension did our children serve? How many black kids from Williamsport was expelled from school? How many were sent to juvenile detention? How many are removed from the class and sent to the principal on a daily basis?